Hello, this is Bridget Mal with Divine Essentials. All right, guys, so I have my um, love journey here, and I, was, I wasn't I was even planning on sharing it, so I had just been like, boop a doop boop and the first two cards that came out were pretty much like, oh, I should probably share, because the first one is we need to rewrite our history, and then the next card was I'm ready to turn the page and write the next chapter together. So I've, I've uh, for some of you, this could be, um, I've been receiving a lot of like uh, synchronicity surrounding writing a book, writing a book, writing a book. Like my dad has said something to me, but originally when it came up to me, I was like, I felt like I shouldn't write a book yet because something else is going to happen that I need to put into the book. And then my dad said it to me like a week later and he said the same exact thing. He was like, but I, I don't think right, right now, I think something else is going to happen. And I was like, oh. Um, so you could have something like that happening right now too. Or you could be getting pushed to write a book. Another perspective that came in about that also was you can write a book and then write another book. Um, like Gabby Bernstein has several best-selling books. And it's the progress of her healing. You know, And I say this all the time. You don't have to be perfectly healed. Nobody is perfectly done. Like, oh, you're all good. You're perfect human. That doesn't exist. But you're always going to be a few steps ahead of people that you can help. Or you're always going to have something to offer people that they don't have. There's something special for everybody. So don't put, like, that was one of the things that came in about, like, putting off writing the book. You don't have to. Like, you can make sequels, okay? But I feel like... There's this connected to whoever, you know, your love journey is, you may need to rewrite your history. And I have talked about this a lot. Like, there's a free little thing on my website, like a little mini um, course type of thing. And it's just like prompts for a few days. And it's like, re like um, write your life, you know, write your life as in like, make the wrongs right about your life by rewriting it and it really is something that people do it's a it's a shamanic practice um like change your story change your life that is a book and it and it's a very detailed book about how to rewrite your story so that you can heal so that or like you can change your timeline people talk about changing your timeline manifesting your beliefs are so powerful that like if if you can rewire the subconscious and rewrite your story you can start living in a new timeline. And then this person says, I'm ready to turn the page and write the next chapter together. Somebody may like have been working on this or they may need to still do this while simultaneously doing this because you can start writing a new chapter that in that includes this. Like people, I think, get stuck in like, oh, I need to be fixed completely before I can have anything. And so they stay separated or they stay separate from like the union that they want with love. They stay separate from the passionate job that they would feel fulfilled within. They stay away from you know, feeling good about themselves, the body that they want because they're focused on what they don't want. Like if you just direct the love at the things that you don't love about yourself, it will reflect back differently to you over time. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to wake up and be like, oh wow, my ass is different. But if you direct love at it for an extended amount of time and then take the fucking actions that go along with that love, because when you truly love yourself, you won't sabotage yourself you won't harm yourself you won't make the choices that you then feel guilty about and you'll also forgive yourself for making those choices and you'll be able to make those choices and still get the results because you won't be hating on yourself you won't be draining yourself you won't be blocking yourself you won't be thinking whatever you're at the oh, if i eat this thing i'm gonna get fat well what do you think is gonna happen there's plenty of other people who eat those things and don't get fat. It's a belief system everything comes down to. Yes, if you consume a lot of bad things for you, it will do bad things to you. But why are you consuming the bad things? Knowing that and then beating yourself up for doing it and then repeating the cycle. One of the best things I think my mother ever taught me was do not focus on like just take what you want when you want. Eat what like just eat and, and enjoy it. Because then you're not going to put yourself into deprivation over it. You're not going to crave it and crave it and crave it and, and suffer and struggle. And then finally break and crack under the pressure and be like, ah, and undo all that you had done. If you just allow yourself to do things 
when you feel like I want to do that and then not hold on to all those beliefs and the guilt and the now this, those now this is don't become. Or if they've been already, you can undo them. And believe me, I know, I've done it. I've And I've been on all sizes of the spectrum and all the way down and all the way up. I had never found like, oh wow, this is the body. This is the perfect body that I'm just madly in love with and everything. Like there was times that I was more confident than others, but there was always like, oh, the cellulite, which started at 12 years old for me because a next door neighbor was a little boy walking up behind me in the steps to their upstairs. And he was like, what's that to a dimple? So I was always hyper aware of those forever. Still am, but like I'm not, I don't focus on it anymore. So I like, I don't sit there in the mirror looking at it, looking for it, creating it. And there, I don't even know if there probably is now because I've gained weight. But again, I don't care. I'm not focused on it. Like, I, like I'm happier now to have meat on my bones because I felt so insecure and like frail when I was down at double zero, when I was a negative A. Like, no, that wasn't, nothing about that felt great. And then all the way back up, you know, I started working on loving myself. That's how I got back up. That's how I beat being stuck down there at zero. And a lot of times it ties in to what story you're telling yourself. Where are you holding the weight? Like if you've got a lot of weight somewhere on your body, what are you holding, okay? And, and are you holding back your truth? Then you may get like some puffiness around the neck. Where are you holding back in relationships or taking on the responsibility? Then you may have it on your lower belly. You know, um, a lot of times people will carry it in places that are, or, or even pain will be carried in places that are significant to what you're doing. Like, you know, people get a chip in the shoulder and their shoulder's all messed up. People um, have back pain. It's like they're, they're carrying the weight of the world. Um, women get you know stuff like the love handles and the belly stuff and a lot of times they're the ones that are holding all the family together and the relationships together and and you need to rewrite that story and fill up with love and fill up with the right emotional connections and things like that be you know giving and receiving reciprocal and making sure that you're not taking the brunt of things and then being, you know, surprised when they manifest on your physical representation of the frequency that you carry, which is your body. You will reverse aging. You will look better. You will feel better when you choose to love every aspect of yourself and don't focus on the conditioning of society. Okay? I don't know why I had to go into all of that. Maybe some of you need to hear that. Because that's how you rewrite your story. You know, and, and then collectively you can rewrite your story with somebody else you know, to fix things, but they need to fix their things. You need to fix your things. And it's not that you need to fix anything really. It's just the way that you're thinking about it. If you keep thinking you're broken or you keep thinking you're not worthy, or you keep thinking you're not lovable, or you don't deserve money or whatever it is that you probably don't even know that needs to be rewritten. So the next chapter doesn't fall apart. So the next chapter doesn't, you know, to be continued and never, and ne we never find out what happens. It's like some cliffhanger that just gets stuck. This says willing to fight for this love with or without you. So I feel like somebody wants to do this, but they may be feeling like they have to fight for it because you may be fighting the coming together or the fighting of the, the writing of the next stage because of whatever you're believing about things, whatever you believe about yourself, whatever you believe about the connection, whatever you believe about, about your person. You know, like if this person could be feeling like you're mad at them, so they're like feeling like maybe they're gonna have to fight, and and they don't, and people want to fight together. They want to write the next chapter together. They don't want to be at odds. They don't want to have issues. You know what I mean? And sometimes we perceive issues where there really isn't any, because we're mad at ourselves. And our twin flames are gonna bring up those things that make us see those things about ourselves, or perceive it within them, to project it onto them and see that in that mirror and, and, you know, put all these things all over the other person and be like, it's their fault that this happened and it's, and it's nobody's fault. Usually it's our own fault, no matter what happened. If somebody treated us badly or like we, and, and again, it's a perceived thing. They may not think they treated you badly, even if they did, and maybe they didn't. And maybe they think they did and they didn't and you don't, but you know, there's nobody will know unless they communicate and work together, fight together to fight whatever illusions are blocking people. Because usually that's all it is, is beliefs and bullshit. 
the people are all like, oh, it's just, you know, they think this, they think that, they said this, they said that. Even if they said it or did it or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it is because of what you think it is or what you've assumed it is or even if it went down exactly how you, because we there's always two sides to a story. So you may need to rewrite the story, go back and fix, like you thought this, but actually th this is how I feel about it. Oh, that may bring more clarity or it could bring you t just closure to be like, okay, well, no, definitely don't want to deal with you anymore if that's the case. You know what I mean? Or, oh, that's okay. I understand. And, and no matter what it is, understand that however somebody is showing up and what they're doing and why they're doing it doesn't mean it's you. It's not your fault. Okay. You didn't be like, I created you. And I, all the things that happened to you in your story and your life that would now lead up to this moment where you're this, this doing these behaviors and acting these ways and met me, it's not my fault. And, and, and if we don't agree, that's not anyone's fault either. That's just okay. We don't agree. So let's agree to disagree <laughs> and, and, you know, not fight, like fight to break free from things that are not going to support you. Okay. Um, and then you have the key. So I feel like you have the key to all of this. And and people need to realize, like, a lot of people are holding on to this energy, like the Queen of Swords energy, because they're mad and they're sad and they're hurt. And, and you're not receptive. And I, I get it. Believe me, I fucking get it. But you also are at the same time wanting something from somebody. Like, you miss them. You love them. Whatever has happened, you've probably, like, accepted it but have you forgiven it or in other cases maybe you have and you're just waiting for that person to forgive themselves but again there's mirrors here too so where do you need to forgive yourself for the lessons and the mistakes that you made because you could be still holding on to underlying beliefs that are not conscious you could be like oh i forgave them for doing that thing that you know hurt my feelings and bop it a boop but underneath it if you're believing like they're gonna do it again or I deserved it because I did this, that, and the other thing, then you still got stuff to work on because you may, nobody deserves anything. We can understand things better by learning about things in ourselves and why people do what they do and like get ourselves off the hook. But we, but we need to do that across the board and just, and just, unless somebody is actively running around trying to harm you and even if they are, still forgive them and know that there's something that has happened to that person that makes them that way. But there would have to be something inside of you that would be like broken too, to be continuing to show up for that. So once you notice that somebody is that severely broken or whatever, wish them the best and remove them from your life so that you don't continue to harm yourself. And that would be the ultimate key to doorway of self-love. And if it's your twin flame, and these are things that are just perceptions that you just believe that they've done something so unforgivable or whatever, forgive them and move on from that and start loving yourself in, in knowing like if I truly love myself I'm loving my true twin flame so if they are my true twin flame and I choose to love myself they're going to reflect that back they're going to heal they're going to break those patterns or those behaviors those things those perceived threats to myself and things will eventually be able to come back to harmony through love even if you're separate from each other and there would be okayness with that separateness because nobody needs anybody to be whole even if you share a soul there's there's you're a whole on your own you don't need anybody it's great to have somebody to complement each other but as soon as you are capable of feeling whole and complete on your own that's when you'll come into wholeness and completion together because you're mirrors okay and and but it but it's a self-discovery thing and it's a healing they say you're the light of my life infinite so infinitely you're there they want to keep you warm they say i always knew it was you you'll be in my heart until the end i will love you for the rest of my life i have an idea let's light each other up and i promise i love you so i do feel like this is something that things need to be illuminated within the story needs to be written on rewritten on both sides and if you want to write a next chapter with this person get truthful and honest with yourself about what where you stand do some belief work surrounding what are your beliefs about the situation because a lot of it may be unconscious that you don't even know that you're believing and it may not even have anything to do with them it could just be beliefs that you have surrounding intimacy and connection and communication and victimhood and worthiness and self-love and all of that stuff manifestation abundance whatever there's so many things so many insecurities those are shadows go do the shadow work thing on tiktok 
and, and it will help you to uncover things and illuminate them so that you can be the light in your life, which then reflects into your twin flame's life and helps you to reach that infinite union.